Replacing him was Ed Stelmack, who earned the nickname Steady Eddie for his lack of a new vision. He wanted to keep things as they were and only make modest changes. Premier Ed Stelmack on healthcare. What are you doing to reduce wait times? This issue affects every single Albertan. We are building new hospitals and coming up with new ways to access health services. I think we need to solve this problem once and for all. We're going to train more nurses and doctors and attract world-class researchers. To my family, healthcare is about the quality of our lives. You have to invest. We will increase tax credits for the caregivers and increase income supports for those who need it. March 3rd, vote for change that works for Albertans. Vote Progressive Conservative. Including these changes was an independent oil royalties review. The review called for changes to how royalties were paid. The new method would allow for oil companies to pay the government in oil, who could then sell it to the market or refine it. Nearing the end of Stelmack's term, they approved the funding for a single government-run oil refinery to refine and sell oil being paid as royalties. Stelmack did go to election in 2008, and surprisingly, he was popular. Premier Stelmack, I was talking to Angus Watt just a few minutes ago, and he said, uh, tell uh, Ed that I'm one of his biggest fans. So there are some people who like you, Ed. <laughs> so. Alberta had two football players and a populist drunk as premiers, and were willing for someone a little less exciting. They just wanted people who knew how to run the government. Most importantly, Stelmack had announced an innovation plan to bring high-tech companies to Alberta. Stelmack had encouraged Dell Computers to set up shop in Alberta, and a new high-tech, low-cost office. Shortly after the successful election, Dell had left the, promise, the province claiming that it was too expensive to operate there. This was after a large grant was sent to them, enticing them to set up shop. They left once the money ran out. The PC party had solidified itself as the party of Albertans. It was now being run by someone who might have fit better with the social credit party. One of the big factors of Stelmack's popularity was that his province was doing well and the world was in a massive global recession, not seen since the Great Depression. Stelmack appeared to be the only ship afloat during a storm and no one was looking to, looking to poke any holes in it. Under Stelmack, Alberta had its first budget deficit and became a have-not province. Despite being popular among Albertans, he was not popular within his own party. Stelmack stepped down from his party and was replaced by Allison Redford. The BC-born Redford was about as close to a career politician as the PC party ever had. Redford started off her life working on electoral reform policy in Africa with Nelson Mandela. She was later hired on by Joe Clark as a policy advisor and rose to work with Brian Mulroney himself. The PC party nomination in Alberta was expensive and difficult. She won a nomination for a writing in 2008 and was swept into power with Stelmack Surge. She was immediately made Minister of Justice and acted as a superstar in the party. Tobacco consumption is the leading avoidable cause of premature death in Alberta. It is responsible for approximately 3,000 deaths each year in Alberta, ranging from cardiovascular disease to cancer to lung disease. Christmas is my favorite time of year in Alberta. Most people spend their time with family and friends. I choose to spend the bulk of my time the way I do the rest of the year, having a scotch with my friends from the oil and gas industry, talking about how to relax environmental regulations. Looks like another mild winter. You're welcome, Canada. On April 23rd last year, Albertans rejected the extreme and the ideological politics of division whether on the left or on the extreme right. They entrusted this party, our party, to deliver on our commitment to build Alberta for the future. At this point, getting a seat was just a matter of money. People from the left and right were happily joining the PC party for the career opportunity. But in 2012, a new force had shown up, the Wild Rose Party. We're having uh, family members appear on the flights. They're being used to take people away on what appears to be weekend and private vacations. This is uh, not how these, 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 flight, these uh, government aircraft were supposed to be used. There was a growing sense that the governing PC party no longer represented the interests of the public. Redford was entrenched in warfare against the unions, trying to make cuts wherever she could and looking to back out on any agreements made in the past. 
Included in this was Bill 46, that banned public service unions from striking. Polls were showing that the Wild Rose Party would form government. But there's one quirk. The Wild Rose Party were like the PC Party on crack. We said that uh, canceling the carbon capture and storage program, which is $2 billion of uh, wasted taxpayer dollars. We said the $100 million venture capital fund deferring the uh, $275 million renovation on the federal building for the UMLA offices, deferring the $340 million for the Royal Alberta Museum. I mean, as you can see, I've already found well more than $107 million to restore the, uh, the education cuts, but they're not prepared to make those kinds of decisions. Everything urban Albertans hated about the PC party, they hated more about the Wild Rose Party. They were ultra right wing and were closer to the party of Ralph Klein and further from the party of Peter Lougheed. Redford began cleaning out and replacing any candidate who looked like they would lose with a local popular candidate. Included in these was Edmonton Mayor Mandel, who had fought with the PC government for almost a decade, but now joined them as the Minister of Health. In 2012 election, Redford was successful in beating the Wild Rose Party leader, Daniel Smith. After losing the election, Daniel Smith began talking with the PC Party about a possible merger. Daniel Smith did this behind the backs of her party, and a dozen MLAs left with Daniel Smith to join the PC Party. Troubles began with Redford a year after in 2013, when she attended the funeral of Nelson Mandela. She was invited because of her personal work with Mandela on electoral reform in Africa. Taxpayers were shocked to find they were footing the bill. The sum was $45,000, and Redford was refusing to pay. It was only when her own PC caucus forced her to that she relented. Uh, the way this uh, leadership is, uh, is run is through intimidation and bullying, and people basically are, I believe, afraid to speak up and talk. Len Weber became a target of Redford, who left the party to sit as an independent, claiming that Redford was turning into quite a bully. Redford's chief ally, Sandra Jensen, bullied Weber on CBC, telling him to grow thicker skin. Two years later, Sandra Jensen would leave the PC party to join the ruling NDP party, accusing them, the PC party, of bullying her. Mr. Speaker, today I rise to make a simple request of my colleagues. To all of the honorable colleagues in this house, if you are stunned by the words you have heard in the last few days, if you reject the inherent violence behind them, and you know that harassment and abuse, even if it's verbal, even if it's online, and even if it's directed at a political opponent, is poison. Redford was also inventing a lot of projects for herself. She had paid for the construction of a penthouse that became known as the Sky Palace for her 12-year-old daughter to live in with a nanny. There was no accountability over Premier's expenses. No one knew how much she was spending, and the only costs they could tag on her were the travel expenses, because they could calculate the costs of her province's private jet. This doesn't look good when you're arguing about public sector spending too much money. Redford eventually stepped down and in 2014 was replaced by Jim Prentice. Prentice was a Harper Conservative minister and was very popular as far as Harper ministers went. Prentice reversed a lot of the unpopular Redford policies and sold the private jumbo jets. Prentice coming to Alberta should have been like Jesus coming to town. He should have been a surefire win. But something else was happening. With presumably all the bad elements of the Royal Rose Party having jumped into the PC Party, people were softening up on their hatred of the Wild Rose Party. They elected former Harper Minister Brian Jean as their leader, and he stood as a different sort of leader. Brian Jean lost his son to cancer while on the campaign trail. You no, know, my youngest son, Michael, we called him Mikey, has gone to a better place. And I stood down from campaigning to spend more time with my family. Mikey was a very very special person. And a year later, he lost his home in the Fort McMurray fires. It's just nice to see them. So, 
but uh, we have a lot of rebuilding. There's a lot of things we have to do. Um, we have to rebuild about 3,000 homes, some apartment buildings. Brian Jean was a leader who resonated with a lot of people. Early in the election, it was looking like Jim Prentice might win. But Prentice had lost the appeal with a lot of people. In an interview, he was asked why his party did certain things, and he kept saying he couldn't comment because he had nothing to do with that. Prentice positioned himself as an outsider, like Ralph Klein was. One line would haunt him. When asked who was to blame for this, he said, Well, we all need only look in the mirror. More correctly, Alberta was getting what they wanted. Alberta wanted balanced budgets, expensive health care, high-paying jobs, and expected all surpluses to become Ralph Bucks. Prentice had given Albertans a bit too much truth. How could they be at fault? They're not politicians running things. Prentice's numbers dipped, and the Wild Rose was the natural replacement for Prentice. But much like in the 1982 election featuring a separatist party, people changed their minds as to who would replace the PC party. After positive performances at debates and heavy amounts of unionized advertisements. Meet Alberta's new premier, Jim Prentice. Jim has a problem. There's a hole in his budget, and he's looking for someone to blame. Is it OPEC's fault? Well, they're an easy target, but the fact is oil prices go up and down. The NDP party under Rachel Notley were rising in the polls. Prentice would be out of a job, and with him were all career opportunities for those running in the party for the better part of four decades. Much like the wave that brought the PC party into power, another electoral correction was happening. Since the PC party came into power, the population of Alberta had almost doubled, mostly in part immigration. The demographics of the province had changed, and so did their needs. Whereas previous generations of Albertans were hawks to fiscal responsibility, this new set of rivals worry more about their quality of life and hashtag trending ideas. The PC party made the classic mistake that most dominant parties make. They couldn't keep up with changing demands of their constituents. Much like the social credit party, the PC party became the party of Albertans and learned to play against the rest of Canada, creating divides among their own Albertans.